I am so excited to be here with Megan Myers. Um, we met through the Simplero Summit, actually. And so Megan was a fellow summit speaker. And then over the la last year or two, um, she's been so kind and generous in like commenting on some of my posts and just adding really thoughtful comments as well. And um, just being grateful to get to know her better. And I'm like, Megan, I wanna talk about your journey because you have a very interesting journey. And I think a lot of my audience members will, will admire it, re resonate with it. And I think you have a lot of experience that um, folks watching this can learn from. So really excited to have you here. Let me just say a little bit about your background and then you can extend that intro however you wish to. Um, well, first of all, before I say your background, we're going to talk today about, I think some of the topics I think a lot of people here are, are, um, are interested in. Passive income, anybody? <laughs> right. We're gonna, Megan and I have been doing the entrepreneurial thing for years, uh, both of us. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a lot to talk about with regards to what does it really take to create so-called passive income? We're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna talk about what does it mean to have a lifestyle business? Because Megan and I have both been creating that. And well, there's there's a lot we can, uh, I'm sure we can learn from each other there. And I'm gonna ask Megan about, about her experience with that. And then we're going to talk about con for content creators, because that's part of, uh, usually that's part of creating a lifestyle business is some kind of content creation. Megan has some really, some really helpful um, mindset shifts for us. And we will end by discussing the hugely important topic of structure. Uh, I know a lot of, a lot of people um, either love or hate that word, but we'll talk about creating freedom through structure. So, all right, let, let me just, tell you all about um, a little bit about Megan, and then I'll, I'll let you um, expand and, and go deeper on this. So first of all, Megan, you're a mother of two, mm -hmm. right? That already, I think, is superhero territory, okay? You would be uh, correct, yes. Yes, yes, it's, it's <laughs> not easy. And how, how old are your kids now, may, may ask? Three and nine. Oh my gosh, so you're still in the, uh, definitely still, are, still super, yes. super mom. We had a uh, meltdown today, yes. <laughs> It's, and, and you're building a business like that's that's you know <laughs> um so you went first first mother two now um previous career maybe first career you were an nfl cheerleader mm -hmm. i mean that story's there I mean, that's amazing right that's just to be able to to, to do that and then yeah. you became a, a dance studio owner you had a successful dance studio ballerina um right ba ballet all styles, all, all styles, styles, kids dance studio. Yeah. Okay. For 15 years. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. And then you, then you launched your online business, uh, digital diva, or I guess it's called the shine online network, right? So my online business, the first online business was launched nine years ago where I took my knowledge as a studio owner for 15 years, packaged that into digital products for studio owner. So I have been right. doing that for nine years now. Wow. Yes. Okay. That's awesome. And then the Shine Online Network is the current. Uh, yes. Current and then the year. three years ago, I started helping other people package their knowledge, expertise, and passion into simple digital products because, wow, what a transformation going from brick and mortar to online. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. Long live and, the internet. And it's, and it's really cool that you have that experience in both worlds because a lot of people only have the online experience or, yeah. So, um, Anything else you want to say about your background that you think the audience might want to know? And then let's start talking about passive income. Yeah, I mean, you summed it up. That's that's the story. You know, dance yeah. studio owner, 15 years to my first online business. And for years, I just have been doing the thing. And the entire time I've had people in my life say, hey, will you help me start an online business? That, that seems really great. You have this business, but you don't really seem to be working all that much. Um, and I always kind of would direct them to a book, you know, I thought, oh, there's, there's gurus that teach this, you know, like yeah, there's, yeah, there's yeah. people, there's courses, there's books. And it wasn't until a, a, about three years ago, I had a conversation with a, an acquaintance and I finally just like, okay, you know, I knew she's her expert in her thing. I finally felt like I know exactly how she needs to package it up. I know how she needs to market it. And let me, I can totally help her. And I did. And I loved it so much that it ended up just blossoming into my current business, which is the Shine Online Network, essentially coaching other people on packaging their knowledge, experience, and passion into simple digital products. And very specifically, I call myself a lifestyle business coach. I know a lot of ways to run a business and a lot of ways, you know, to make money, a lot of marketing 
tricks and tips and all of that stuff. You know, I did everything in my brick and mortar days, but specifically, I'm only really interested in passing on, you know, the stuff that's going to be high leverage, the stuff that creates time freedom, the stuff that best maximizes someone's time and talent, you know, and creates a win-win situation for themselves and, and their customer, of course. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Okay. So um, one quick thing before we continue here. All right, let's dive into passive income. Um, a lot of people understandably say, gosh, I wish I didn't have to, you know, do business that much. And I can just have, <laughs> have the money from the business I've done and then just work on my art or work on creating things or, you know, researching more, studying more, whatever it is. So, so let's, given both of us have, you know, lots of experience with what is your perspective on passive income? Let's start there. So, you know, I am passionate about what I say, dispelling the myth of passive income, because from my perspective, I, I really specialize and I'm really passionate about helping people get started with their first digital product. I'm often talking to people from quote unquote, the real world, you know, who want to start an online business. They want to create that first digital product. And so to me, there's so much hype in the online marketing world about passive income, as if once you create the course, you know, money just shoots out of your printer or shoots up, you know, into your PayPal account magically. And clear, obviously that's not the case, but I feel like the hype is so high that it makes the average person who's new to this industry think the whole industry is, is fake, right? Like no one's actually making money online. And that is equally untrue. So I'm passionate about dispelling that myth of no, we, we are still running businesses. And we can create lifestyle businesses. We can do it in a way that feels good. We can create products in a way that fit our personality, the style of content we like to create, um, the schedule we want to create on, work with coach, work with clients if that's a part of our work. However, you can set up the business totally custom to you, but it's still a business like any other business. So the other extreme is if someone comes in thinking, oh, I just create the course and the money is going to magically show up in my PayPal account, right? Like that's also not true. We have to do marketing. Otherwise no one's going to know about it. We have to do customer service. We have to continue to create our products, our services, our content, right? So it's a business like any other. It's just a very, it's just a great business. You know, we can work in a very high leverage way, but it's still a business. So I think being honest about that, that that medium ground that is required yeah i i so appreciate that because um all of us who work in this field are are you know uh, we lose credibility when someone else continues to hype up you know what this is supposed to be about oh you can make six figures in two minutes you know by buying yes. my digital product and then it'll instantly come to you but um but but i i have noticed right like and i'm sure you have as well like as you create these digital products, like the first one probably takes a lot of work because you don't know what you're doing and, <laughs> and all the systems. The second one's hopefully a little bit easier. And then it just like once you have a system and that's something that, you know, I'm sure you work with your clients on, like once they have a system, then then actually the promise of passive income starts to look much more possible, right? Like, right. like actually like, oh, okay, this is, this is how the marketing is going to go. Okay. This is how the delivery of the product is going to go. Oh, this is how we can automate this process, which is that, okay, I can see how, okay, I've got one digital product now that's making, you know, maybe a little bit of money or something. What if I had 10 of them, <laughs> you know, yes. it's like, oh, wow, I can see the possibility. So yeah. What, do, what are your thoughts on, on, on that kind of trajectory pathway? Like you help, you help your clients develop their first digital product. Do you do you encourage them to create multiple ones? How, how, how does that work? Yes. So I, I do agree. There's absolutely elements of the business that can be passive. In fact, my princess ballerina business that I've had for nine years, it is absolutely passive at the, at this point. Wow. Um, awesome. But that's, that's several years in, and yeah. there were elements of it being passive in the beginning. You know, the product itself was sort of self-serve but I was always focusing on the marketing. So, you know, you're always doing something or the cust or customer service like that part never really goes away. You can streamline it. You can systemize it so that it reduces the need for as much customer service, but you know, it's, you're, it's, it does take a while to actually develop 
those passive income streams. Now, and again, I'm usually talking to people who are brand, brand new. So in the beginning, it does take more effort to get anything started, right? A new business started. So I do want to be honest, specifically with the people I'm talking to. It's like they're th that first six months, that first year, it takes extra energy to create, to get feedback, to find your flow, to find the, the your creation style. That That's going to take extra energy to get up and running. And then certainly there will be certain products that will develop that will be totally passive, you know, and, and, and that's fine too. That's great. There, that is the beauty of an online business is there can be passive elements, but even so like my princess ballerina's business, I'm still, it's passive in a sense, but I'm still running Facebook ads. You know, I'm not, not doing anything. I've developed enough systems that these activities are still happening. I'm just not needing to do them myself, but the marketing is still happening. The emails are still going out. I'm just not personally having to spend as much time doing it. Yeah. I, I appreciate hearing about that because it, it does. It's like the first time we do it, like we have, we are, we've got our hands in it. We see how the system works and then, and then it makes much more sense to, well, we can intelligently automate it parts of it or outsource parts of it. And then, you know, we're now touching in on a high level, much less frequently, right? Um, yes. Okay, so uh, let's move on to talking about the lifestyle business idea. That's another common you know, phrase that we hear along with the passive income. So what does that mean for you? What is a lifestyle business um, and how have you created yours? Yeah, so, you know, I would say it's, it's twofold. Number one, it is a something that fits the exterior part of your life. So for me, I've been a mom of young kids the past nine years. So having my online business fit around that schedule, my, my princess ballerina's business has fit into, you know, what I say, the corners of my life, you know, it'll be a nap time. It'll be in the evenings for an hour, grabbing time around my main life, my, you know, taking care of kids during the day. So part of a lifestyle business is that, or if I'm a client that I work with with Shine Online, maybe getting ready for retirement or recently into retirement. And they, it's not that they, you know, are ready to like sit in the rocking chair and not do any work. They just don't want the commute anymore. They don't want the, the, you know, the, maybe the brick and mortar business with all the staff and all the headaches. So creating an online business where they can get into mentor mentorship or coaching that they can do virtually, that they can travel now and still, you know, be contributing and also still earning that fits their lifestyle. So part of it is that the other part of it, which also feeds into the, the passive income thing is if you create a business that just fits you, your personality, I actually think it, it's a joy to be in creating. It's a joy to work in your business and to do the weekly tasks. If you set it up in a way that is a good fit for you. So that's the other piece of that passive income, I, you know, and that's actually something I was surprised with my princess ballerina's business. I was so like, Oh, I'm going to create this passive income, but so I can just be this mom. And it was actually kind of uncomfortable to get everything. So passive. I, there was nothing more for me to create. I'm a very creative person. And so it was almost frustrating. And, and that's something shine, my shine online business has brought me back to life in a sense, because it's this new framework where I'm careful not to over systemize myself out of the business on purpose, because there's actually joy in showing up every week and creating those blog posts and doing interviews in working with clients. And that's something I learned from almost creating a very passive income business is there's actually joy in that. So that's the other piece of creating a lifestyle business is creating something that you honestly love to show up to every single week. Now we might limit it to those 10 hours a week. I'm not talking 40, 60 hours a week. You know, we might aim for 10 to 15 hours, but those are for the most part, it can be enjoyable 10 to 15 hours a week for you. If we structure it in a way that it fits you. Yeah, I love that. And that's one of the you know the great values of working with someone like you who has all this experience is that you can help the client to structure because it, it's one of the common challenges, you know, I hear from solopreneurs or people kind of starting out with creating their businesses. There's so much to do. There's like you know, unlimited you know, courses to take and uh, strategies to follow. That's like, well, what, what is the, what is the most effective thing way I should be spending my time. And so like, you know, working with someone like you is like, Oh, I mean, let's, let's talk about, 
what is your ideal lifestyle? What hours are you wanting to work? And what kinds of uh, ways do you want to express your skills? And then, you know, you can help them to structure that, that um, you know, their ideal week or something like that. Um, and, and one of the things that I love, I love that. I, I love the, the joy that you're experiencing creating. Um, yeah, like you said, it brings us to life. You know, it's like, you know, like our vibrant life energy, right? Especially, for example, those who are retired or, or even those who are um, you know, out of a corporate job and wanting to create their own thing. It's like experiencing that um, sense of creation is um, it, like, I feel like I, I really started my professional life at that point when I started. So I, I wanted to, I wanted you to share a bit about your mindset when it comes to content creation. Um, a lot of people, when they think, when they hear content, they he hear content marketing. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm just creating so that, you know, I can sell my stuff or I can like make my brand more visible or something like that. And obviously it has those benefits, but tell us how you, well, talking about the joy of creating, um, what is your mindset around that? Well, I mean, this is definitely something I picked up from you, George. I, I give you full credit for that shift of- Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> absolutely. But, yeah. To be honest, I mean, in my Princess Ballerina's business, I created a lot of content, but a lot of it was behind a paywall. So I loved sure. to create for my customers. Mm -hmm. And what worked for me is, I mean, I could run Facebook ads to a, the same, you know, little, little freebie for one of my lesson plans, then through email, and I would get customers for my- my membership that way. I didn't really need to do a lot of outside like blogging and YouTube videos, any sort of outside content. Um, I just quote unquote, didn't need it. And so I didn't pursue it. And anytime I thought, Oh, let me, let me try to get more results back before I learned the George Cal way of enoughness. Another thing I got from you. Um, thinking, well, I, if I'm doing this much from this much work, well, why don't I also start blogging? Why don't I also start creating content? But I didn't see the as quick of results as just running a Facebook ad and putting it into my funnel. So I thought, well, what's the point of this? I'm not doing this. And, and it wasn't until, you know, I, but again, I, it kind of, my energy got a little more stagnant in that there was almost nothing to do. I kind of systemized myself out of that business creatively speaking. And, and so it really was you learning from you, that idea of like content as a ministry, first of all, get instantly opened my mind to a larger opportunity for content creation. Now I am so excited to put a blog post out, to put a, a podcast episode out, to do an interview like this, which if it impacts someone in some way, and I never speak to that person, I don't care if they get on my list, buy anything from me, connect with me in any possible way. If if there if there's someone who listens to this and is uplifted in some way, benefits in some way, just get some random idea from some word I said. That is, is very that gives purpose to all of this to me. So it created this larger purpose for creating content. So not only so that which for some reason I, I should have just enjoyed the fact of creating content because I like to create, I'm a very creative person, but somehow having that larger purpose behind it, like gave me the justification to go ahead and do it anyway. Like yeah. as if my enjoyment wasn't enough justification yeah. now that, Oh, the content as a ministry, what a yeah. beautiful concept and what yeah. a great reason to, to create. And of course it's going to benefit your business also. Yeah. But and this, and the reality is like, there are people in the world who resonate with your energy signature more than anybody else in, in, in your field, right? And which is why I, I love doing interviews like this, because there are people watching this who are going to resonate with your energy signature a lot and want to follow your content and work with you and things like that. So this is great. Okay. I want to, I, I want to make sure we have enough time to talk about this idea of freedom through structure. And this is especially wonderful to be able to have your perspective on this as a mother of young children. Um, I, 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 I don't have kids myself. So whenever I work with, you know, clients who are parents, I'm like, first of all, I, I'm, I'm so admirable, admiring your ability to, to just stay awake, <laughs> I guess. No. Um, so, so please, Megan, tell us how you do it. Two, two kids in the last nine years, right. And especially the last three years, how do you do that? Plus, you know, run your business plus in you know, more than one business, plus I'm sure everything else in your personal life. So 
give us some give us some guidance. Yeah, there. I mean, I I'm a big fan of of systems, and I discovered systemization and the idea of systems back when I had my dance studio. That's what allowed me to you know get myself out of being the only teacher, being the only one at the front desk. Was the systems and creating. Oh, here's how we do things at my studio. You could train other people, um, and then those checks and balances. And I just started extending that into all areas of my life in terms of like meal planning. It's like, if you create just simple systems around, you know, housework and meal planning, your just whole life runs so beautifully systems work 99.9999% of the time. Right. But also there's a lot of creative freedom in that. So like my princess ballerines dance program, that's a lesson plan framework that I created so that I could, um, share with my staff and we could build a bigger program, you know, without just me doing it. And I had a, a very choreographed, beautiful experience based on themes and themed music and all of this stuff. But as a teacher, it's like, when I have to show up to teach a dance class or something and, and it's, it's like, uh, you have to think of it and you're just kind of pulling stuff out of thin air to show up. And it, that feels stressful when there's a, a plan there. It's like, I could relax and just be like, oh, okay, we're doing the fairy garden theme. Oh, and then you're, you can be in flow within, with that structure. It's like some people describe flow as, you know, the, the river only flows because there are banks. Right. And, and so that allows that water to then flow. And, and I find that's true in, in my business too. When I have a, a structure for the weekly tasks I'm going to do, if I know I always aim to write my blog post on a Tuesday, I don't have to every week be like, oh, when am I going to write my blog post? I can just not think about that blog post until it's Tuesday when, okay, today is blog post writing day and sit down and, and, and so you just reduce a lot of drag on your mental activity on your life. When you just kind of create these structures, um, in your life, but yeah. then also, you know, you can create a lot of time freedom too. I mean, I've only ever worked about 10 hours a week. So when you say, how wow. do you do it? I've only ever worked 10 hours a week to work, to make a full-time income for the past nine years. Wow. And, and that is because I'm relying on the systems for my marketing systems, yeah. for my email system, yeah. you know, software Amazing. systems. I also consider branding to be a system. Like I don't mm -hmm. have to get lost in the shiny object syndrome of Canva because I have a brand. I know what my fonts are. I know what my colors are. I can stay focused. That's true. So, okay. Systems all around. <laughs> now, what if one of the kids needs something and it's a Tuesday when you're supposed to be writing your blog post. Um, what happens? What do you do? How do you set so boundaries? I, <laughs> yes. So I, I'm a realist. So even though, you know, yes, and people work and have kids. So if I wanted to have someone here, you know, my three-year-old still at home, she starts school this, this fall, but this entire time for nine years, I have had a small child here, you know, running their tyranny on my life and I'm their snack slave, you know? So that has, I have just been a realist where I will do my work at nap time or when everyone's in bed at eight o'clock for the most part, unless there's something special like an interview. You know, my husband's got the kids out to ice cream right now. Cause this is a special 5.30 here in California time. So they're out at ice cream. But so I'm kind of just a realist in that sense because I know if I were trying to work like, well, I should be able to work and three-year-old, you should be over there doing your puzzle. Cause that's what I intend they don't care about your schedule and it's just going to be, I'm going to be resentful when she doesn't want to do her puzzle and I'm trying to write my blog post. So I've just found and just accepted the reality of my life with small children, knowing that at some point they'll both be in school. And then, you know, I can restructure, which is happening this fall after nine years. <laughs> Can't wait. Um, but so that that's mostly it. And then also I have enjoyed the challenge of like, cause who would be so, it's ridiculous to think you can make a full-time income, a, you know, six-figure income working 10 hours a week. Like who thinks they should be able to do that? That shouldn't even, you know, but I kind of have enjoyed giving myself those sorts of challenges. <laughs> like, okay, I think I can do at least two hours a day and here's how much I want to make because I had a business. I had a studio that was making that. So I had to replace that in order to justify letting the brick and mortar studio go. And so then, you know, that, that forced limitation again is, is a point of creativity where you get really creative, you get really efficient, really quick when you're like, how can I make X amount of dollars, but I can only work 10 hours a week, you know, on average. 
And so you, you know, leverage is my best friend. I'm always trying to find my leverage points. What's the most valuable thing I can offer? What's the most um, efficient way I can do it? You know, what are, what are the things I can do most quickly, most easily that are also high value points for other people where everybody wins, you know? Yeah. This, this is so great. I, I mean, I think this is, this is one of the things that clients can really benefit from working with you is, well, you've done it. Um, having those kinds of, I mean, cause for example, someone like me who doesn't have kids, I can work a lot more hours. And so fill my days with activity. Whereas you have to be super focused and choose uh, what to let go of, what to systematize, and how to make offers that are really value. Anyway, so this is this is this is awesome, and it's inspiring to hear um, that you've done it and uh, that that you're available to help others with that too. So anyway, Megan, uh, your your husband might be back any moment, right, with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to make sure we we end on time ish. Um, tell us about. How you how you work with clients? What what should uh, those if someone's watching this and says, okay, Megan, I want to work with you. What's their next? Sure, step? sure. Well, um, you can learn more at, at the website. You know, shineonlinenetwork.com. But briefly, I do have a book that I like to share that packages up kind of it kind of walks through everybody through how I would create an online business, um, how I did create my online business, the structure. Um, and I give that book away totally for free. It's on my website. I also have a membership. So if you are a DIYer, I was a hardcore DIYer. I wanted to learn all the things. I learned the Facebook ads. I learned the marketing. I learned, you know, the sales funnels, tech. I love it all. If you're a fellow DIYer like me, that's what the membership is for you. And it really helps people. I, I walk them through creating their first digital product and also their first sales funnel. So we're very specific. We have a very specific result that we are working on there. And then the other end of the spectrum is I do work with clients who are sort of like, I don't want, because there, there's parts of the business. Not everyone needs to learn how to build the website, build sales funnels. Some people are just absolutely allergic to tech. So I do have a whole done for you option where we work together for 90 days. I call that my digital diva concierge program. We essentially work together to come up with your concept, the value ladder, um, and, and then we a brand, and then I essentially build the whole thing for you, your website, your sales funnel, your automations, um, and all of that good stuff, all your marketing systems. And we build it and you're up and running in 90 days. And then your job is to then run it. So then you, you keep up with, you know, whatever we decide is going to be your ongoing content creation, that schedule that we will design together. Then you, you kind of go into, um, management mode, but you don't, you can skip the whole learning how to build everything structurally because most people only have to do that once. So it doesn't always make sense for everyone to take all of the courses and they can kind of, you know, leapfrog over that first part. Wow. Amazing. It's so great that you have these different levels of people to, to kind of work with you. So of course I'll have the links below for your website Perfect. and other places. And um, thank you so much, Megan. Appreciate my you know, pleasure. Thank you, getting George. To know you better, and um, thank you for the work that you do with your with your people. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks.